As a little girl growing up in Hannah, Louisiana, I had to have the perfect crawfish stick, and I had to have it ready when Granddaddy Doc said, let's go. We'd head down the road just a couple of miles to my favorite crawfish hole, and we'd fill up bucket after bucket with these big brown crawfish clawing and crawling to get out. But they were destined for Friday night's crawfish boil. Now fishing was a little bit more complex, but I did enjoy digging bait in the backyard and heading to Bayou Pierre or the banks of the Red River where they had these huge sand dunes and I would always walk to the top and pretend I was a princess in the Sahara Desert. But my favorite place was my own backyard. Tall trees, creeks, flower gardens, abandoned buckets, rags, lawnmowers were just a few of the treasures that set my mind free all day long. I made mud pies and would swing for hours in my tire swing and with my multi-passionate crawfish stick push up against the grass and pretend that I was an, an adventure at sea, which was the cornfield across the road. As I grew older, I continued to daydream, but I also studied very, very hard. I was competitive in sports and I was in numerous clubs and activities. I knew an adventure lay ahead and I wanted to be ready. So when my mom rushed in the door the summer before my senior year and proclaimed, Seneca, we're going to get you to go to West Point. My first thought was, don't you need to know the president or someone like that? However, I jumped on AOL.com and absolutely fell in love with the idea of being a cadet. I saw myself running through the woods and feeling right at home. I saw myself on the track and field team, going across the nation with the glee club, preparing for medical school, making friends from all around the world. And most importantly, I saw myself wearing the uniform all day, every day, because I hated shopping. I felt that West Point was my destiny. And what an adventure that would be. So my life at West Point in 20 seconds. Ready? Let's go. Chest out, walk proud, shine your boots. Flirty walk, thirsty turtle, shine your boots. Orgo lab, biochem, shine your boots. Out the pool, run the class, shine your boots. Walking hour, sitting hour, shine your boots. Glee club practice, track practice, shine your boots. Oh my God, am I going to graduate? Shine your boots. Now let me talk about the significance of shining a pair of black leather combat boots, which are now obsolete in the Army. It takes time effort, kiwi, and a little bit of spit to get that perfect gloss. But to step out in those shiny shoes, it means that you care about yourself. You care about you, what you're doing and that you can do almost anything. I did graduate on May 28, 2005, and it was the, one of the best days of my life. I partied on a yacht from the galley to the deck, and I stepped in the name of love with some of my best friends and family all night long. I later said goodbye, and I traveled from New York to El Paso with those boots strapped in the front seat of my car. I checked into the Extended Stay America the night before Officer Basic Training Course. I went out that night with a few of my classmates and later returned to my room, and I sat on the edge of my bed. And I looked over at the boots. And it was as if they were looking back at me, saying, come shine me, come on, come on, you know what time it is, you know what you gotta do tomorrow. And I tried to get up, but I couldn't move. A horrible feeling of anger gripped me, and I became mad at the boots, and I really, 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 did not want to shine them. And simultaneously, another part of me started freaking out. Seneca, shine your boots. Seneca, shine your boots. What are you doing? You got to shine your boots. We've come from too far for you to get here and not shine your boots. You're not a slacker. Shine your boots. And I tried to get up again, but felt paralyzed and almost suffocated by a stronger feeling, as if someone from deep down inside of me was holding on to me and saying, who are you? 
I will not let you go until you tell me who you are. I know, I got it, you just graduated from West Point and you have a job lined up as a second lieutenant, but that's not all that you are. Who are you? And I began to hyperventilate, barely able to breathe because I didn't know. My stomach felt full and knotted. I felt like at that moment that I could just die, I could just vanish as if I never even existed. But I managed to think of a couple courses of action. Number one, call my mom. But she's just going to say, Seneca, shine your boots. Just shine your boots. Everything is going to be OK. OK, call my dad. But he's going to say, oh, come home, my little poo-poo. Come home. But I couldn't go home. I would go to jail. <laughs> Number three, call my best friends. But they're going to say, Seneca, girl, quit acting crazy and shine your damn boots. I had no one to call. No one that could give me the advice that I needed. No one could tell me my purpose. So I dropped down to my knees and I put my hands on the bed and my head in my hands and I closed my eyes and I began to pray, Lord, please, please, please tell me my purpose. Please tell me, who am I? Why am I living? What is all of this? Why are we all living? Please tell me. I know it's something. I know you didn't just bring me here. I'm ready to hear it now. Please tell me. I didn't get an answer. There was no sign. There was no lightning bolt. An operations order would have been pretty great at about that time. It was just darkness. And I began feeling like I was falling down this deep, dark hole. And my head was up straight and my arms hung down to my side. And I could see these ridges these gray ridges, and I felt like if I could just recall or know one truth about life, that I could throw up my arm and grab a ridge and pull myself up. So I just started thinking, okay, a truth, a truth. What do I know, a truth? What do I know? Okay, the sun comes up and the sun comes down. Right, right, right. But no, the sun doesn't do that. The sun, the earth rotates around the sun on an axis at a rate, but I'm not an astronaut. I've never seen that. I just need a truth, Lord, please. Please give me a truth, something that I know. And it was as if a phrase was imported into my mind. You're going to die. And I repeated those words in a low moan. I'm going to die. And then I said those words louder. And as I said those words louder, my arm reached up and it grabbed a ridge. And I jumped up off the floor in the hotel room and I shouted, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. That's something I know. Thank you, God. Yes, I'm going to die. Everybody dies. My grandfather died. And I just felt so free at that moment. I felt free from burden. And I flipped on the light, and I took out a pen and a piece of paper, and I drew a circle. I was born March 7th. That is a fact. I was born. And I drew another circle. I'm going to die. I will die. And I looked at those two circles, and it just seemed natural to draw a line connecting those two circles. And when I drew that line and I looked at that piece of paper, I almost fell off the bed. Oh my God, this line represents my life. So what is this line? What, is, what does this all mean? What, is it, what does it matter? What matters about this line? And it took a split second to think. Happiness. Happiness is the only thing in life that matters before we die. Now let's take a look at that thought for a second. If happiness is the only thing that we can control, that means happiness is a choice. Happiness is a verb then, not a noun. A verb connotates action. There are things that you do. Let's think back to some of the Verbs that we used when we were kids that we know. Run, jump, sing. It's easy to see the action in those verbs. Now I'm going to give you another set of verbs. Eat, drink, breathe. Although we initially may not see the action in those verbs, those actions are what are essential 
to life. If you do not choose to eat, then you become weak. Your body begins to not function as normal. And if you continue to choose to not eat on a, for long enough, you will die. When I think back to the moment in that room, and if happiness is in fact a verb, happiness belongs on that second list of verbs. Now let's take these verbs. I know how to run. I know how to jump. I know how to sing. I know how to eat. I know how to drink. I know how to breathe. How do you happy? I found that you have to separate yourself from the external. I walk three miles every day. I plant my feet on the ground. I breathe in fresh air. I clear my mind. I connect to the universe. When I connect, I clear my mind of gunk, jealousy, envy, ego, vanity, pride. And it feels really good. Thinking back on my childhood, life was a lot more simple. It was easier to connect. I had my rivers, my bayous, my dreams. I was happy. In that room, life became a little bit more complicated because I could feel my ability to connect. It felt like it, there were limitations to it. And so I thought about the process, the process of waking up and walking and clearing my mind. And I continued that process. That process led me to my purpose, healing. I am currently studying traditional Chinese medicine at Pacific College of Oriental Medicine in New York City. It led me to my love, my partner, my soulmate. It led me to two beautiful children that I love so much. So when, we, when I put myself, let's go back to that room when I was on that floor. And I felt like I could fade. I got down on my knees and I, I prayed. And I got an answer. Happiness is a choice. It's a process. I got up off the floor. I walked across the room. I grabbed my kiwi. And I used a little bit of spit. And I shined those boots better than I ever had before. As if a little girl again in my tire swing I took out my crawfish stick, I pulled up the anchor, and I set sail ready for my first harbor, the United States Army. Thank you.